Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1100. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. First of all, I have to say, I can't believe I just said podcast 1100. Yes, this is my 1100th podcast. That's crazy to me. (laughs) Anyway, I just had to acknowledge that. So today what we're going to talk about is Warren Buffett's quote, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. What does that mean and how does that apply to what's going on right now? Because sometimes I think when the time comes for us to be greedy, we are fearful. And let's break down that quote and see how it applies to what's going on today because everyone has a tendency to think this time it's different. And they say those are the four most dangerous words in the English language. This time it's different. Why? Because the cause of a stock market decline is always from one thing or another, and it may not be seemingly the same thing. For example, in 2000, we had a dot-com bubble that burst, And then in 2008, we had more of a real estate crisis. So even though they weren't seemingly the same cause, that doesn't matter. It's the decline in the market that comes from fear. And that happens on a regular basis. And that's what's not different. So what we want to know is, is now the kind of time that Warren Buffett was talking about? Is now the time we should start thinking about being greedy? And I want to argue that it is. First of all, what causes fear in the markets? Well, initially it's uncertainty and that can have a lot of underlying causes. Today we see things like high inflation and rising interest rates and monetary policy that feels very out of control and possible corporate earnings that are declining, although they have held up pretty well so far for a lot of companies. But these macroeconomic indicators are creating some uncertainty and fear and the media piles on and the negativity becomes overwhelming, which leads to panic and fear and selling. Now we're not able to control any of that, but there is something that we can control and that is how we approach it. So if a market has declined 25 or 30%, we can't control that but we can control what we do about it. We can control if we turn our thoughts from fear to, as Warren Buffett says, becoming greedy and seeing the opportunity that that's presenting for us. Because we know that these times are not permanent and they happen every few years, like clockwork pretty much. I mean, we get these 25 to 40% drops every so often. So we should be getting a little bit more used to how to handle them, but we don't because every time there is something different happening that's causing the same panic and fear. But a decline in a market is what Warren Buffett is calling essentially a sale. If you dollar cost averaged into stocks or crypto, When they're down 50% to 90%, like some of them are today, but they're still viable companies or viable technologies with good earnings or good prospects in the future and great growth rates, would you be smart or stupid for buying them at such a sharp discount? We know the S&P 500 is down about 24% year to date. The NASDAQ is down 32% year to date. Quality stocks like Apple are down 23%. AMD down 59%, Intel down 49%, Microsoft down 30%, Nvidia down 59%, Amazon down 32%, Google Alphabet down 32%, Facebook Meta down 60%, Tesla down 37%, and Netflix down 63%. Now, these are generally thought to be quality stocks, 
but they've already declined quite a bit. And yes, they could go lower. We may not have seen the bottom yet, but trying to get the exact bottom is a fool's game. You really can't get the exact bottom. Oftentimes it can be a spike down really quickly. It can happen after hours when the markets are closed and only institutions are trading. It can happen in the past. We might have already seen the bottom behind us, which if that's the case, nobody would believe that to be true and people would be highly skeptical because bottoms don't advertise themselves as the bottom. And when the bottom is in, few people believe it to be the bottom. And that's why emotionally, it's very hard to try to invest when the markets are possibly still declining. I mean, you literally might feel like I do sometimes where you just feel sick to your stomach, you don't want to buy, you have to force yourself to buy and it doesn't feel good when you're going against the tide. But I've done that so many times in my life and usually when I look back on it later, I'm so happy I did that. Now you can also automate your buying. So you're doing dollar cost averaging through your 401k plan, for example, or through automatic investing in your investment account rather than going in manually and buying. It's up to you. But if you buy when you don't feel like buying and you hold your nose and buy, it can be one of the best investments if you look out over a three to five year time horizon. Just make sure you're not using any leverage. Don't ever borrow to buy stocks, even if they're down this much. That can totally wreck a portfolio. So I have to admit, I did start some buying on Friday and I felt like there were some great bargains out there and prices were so low on some quality stocks and investments, ETFs, I couldn't resist. We have quality cryptocurrencies on sale. Our favorite ISO 2022 messaging cryptocurrencies, which I believe are part of the new financial system. Those are dramatically reduced from their all-time highs. We have tech stocks that are on sale that have declined between 50 and 90%. We have stocks that are paying dividends of 3% to 6% annually that are quality businesses with consistent strong earnings. If you were to buy the S&P 500 in the form of an index fund today, the top 10 holdings you would buy in that ETF would be Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Google Alphabet, Berkshire Hathaway, United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson, ExxonMobil, and Facebook Meta. If you want to do that, you can use good quality S&P 500 ETFs like symbol VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, or SPY, which is the State Street version, or FXAIX, which is Fidelity's S&P 500 ETF or Schwab's is SWPPX, or iShares, which is IVV. All of those are going to get you the S&P 500 ETF. And if you can't think of anything to buy, or you're not confident about which individual stocks to buy, or you wanna be more diversified, which I think is a great idea to use ETFs for more diversification, then those could be some things that you consider. Use this information as a starting point to do your own research. It's not financial advice and I'm not telling you to buy anything that I've mentioned here. But remember this, wealthy people welcome declines like this so they can buy at lower prices, which is exactly what Warren Buffett was trying to tell us. When prices appear like this and stocks are on sale, that's the time to be greedy. That's the time to take the risk to buy the investment when it's already declined and it's on sale. But when an investment has gone up dramatically and has massive increases like we saw during the pandemic when certain stocks just went out of control on the upside because we were all confined to our homes, well, that was the time when everyone was greedy and it was a good time to sell those individual companies. In hindsight, we can see that so clearly. And I think three to five years from now, we'll look back and say, this was a great buying opportunity. What you don't want to do is be kicking yourself two years from now when those stocks are a lot higher and you wish that you had taken action and bought, but you didn't do it. So do your research, make sure this is right for you. Don't risk too much, 
But if you have the opportunity, particularly in your 401k, to continue to invest, to dollar cost average, to buy quality at a discount, this might just be the time to be greedy when others are fearful. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.